Welcome, fans, to a very special edition of the Great North Wrestling Podcast. My name is Jack Kilby, Executive Vice President of Great North Wrestling. And tonight, we are very pleased to welcome a man who is a, a legend in terms of his work in the original ECW, WWE SmackDown, former Cruiserweight Champion. The accolades go on and on. But what we're here to talk about tonight is his upcoming match, huge match, July the 15th, just days away in Smith Falls, Ontario, where he will be facing the almighty Bloodhunter. I am, of course, talking about none other than the Sicilian shooter, Nunzio or Little Guido, whatever you, you prefer. But Nunzio, welcome to the podcast, sir. Thank you very much for having me. I appreciate it. And we'll do the little sign for them. Absolutely. Absolutely. Handshake. What what the fans, what the fans love. Now, speaking of the fans, there, there's been a tremendous amount of, of uh, discourse online about this match. The fact that you you're making a, a rare appearance in Canada and you will be facing stepping up to to face a man who who has left a trail of broken bodies in his wake, the one and only blood hunter. You have a uh, shoot background and you, ha- you are a very skilled competitor, but I want to get your thoughts on this big match on July the 15th, one of the co-main events in the Smith Falls showdown. So um, I, I've heard of this guy and good thing about uh, Google, I could look him up and, uh, you know, see what he looks like, see what kind of wrestler he is. Uh, and uh, yes, I have not been to Canada. I kind of put wrestling on the back burner the last few years. Uh, I moved on and I got stuff going on on the outside. And I still take uh, bookings, uh, but I, I prefer to do more, mostly local, whether it's a two, three hour drive the most. Um, you know, really not taking, doing some flights close by, you know, uh, really not taking any overseas stuff or anything like that or anything far. Uh, got hooked up with MLW, so we're working with them, and they, they're good because they, they work out of my area, New York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania. So um, so that's always good. So um, other than that, you know, so basically when, when I spoke to you about coming in for this show, I, I at first I wasn't really sure about it, and then, you know, we kept talking a little bit, and you said there seems to be some interest. And, you know, it's been a while in Canada. I really enjoyed going to Canada. I had a lot of fun in Toronto and, and many other places as I did in all over the wrestling world. Um, so so I agreed, and uh, I think it's going to be fun. I think the match is going to be fun. It seems like a great promotion, um, very professionally run, and uh, hopefully there'll be no problems. We get in, we get out, and we entertain the fans, and we have some fun. Well, that's that's exactly what uh, the fans are, are talking about, is, is the fact that you, know, you have such a rich history in the, the business, and... I, I'm just I'm just curious as to whether or not you've uh, faced a man like the Bloodhunter, who's been, you know, he's been compared to a modern day Dick the Bruiser by Kevin Sullivan. He's he's extremely violent, and he's he's quite a uh, quite a big man too. Do you do you have faith in your your shoot skill set that that you'll be able to overcome that that outright attack that the Bloodhunter is famous for? Well, I've, I've not seen too much. I just started, uh, you know, looking into him. Um, but I don't know. I mean, I, I mean, if I've wrestled anybody like that before, I mean, I have wrestled The Undertaker on numerous occasions, different type of animal maybe. I got to still look up uh, the Blood Hunter. Um, I wrestled Brock Lesnar. I wrestled Kurt Angle. Now, he, these guys are great technical wrestlers, you know. So I, think I wrestled the big show. You want to talk about a big man. I wrestled Mark Henry. You know, and I wrestled these guys multiple, multiple times. Not that I may have won them, but the FBI did beat The Undertaker uh, one time with in a group in a six-man tag. So um, so I have, re- I mean, if you think about it, all the ca- the, what the guys I just threw out you, there's nobody bigger than I could have actually wrestled against and then have to go against him. So, I mean, I just named, you know, top performers in, in one of the, the major company in the world. And uh, I don't think there's anybody higher. So for me to be prepared for this for this animal, as I hear, uh, I think my past speaks for itself. Yeah, absolutely. And and given the fact that you you know you cut your teeth in that uh, original ECW, 
violence and and uh, blood and gore you're no stranger to but i wanted to ask you some of the fans online have been sending questions and they're they're interested in in one aspect of your career in terms of how did you earn that uh moniker sicilian shooter uh i actually got that from joey styles joey styles we were uh doing a show one time and uh i think at the time we were uh well like the reason it came about was because i i finished up with uwfi in japan and i was doing all the shoot fighting for uwfi so when i came there I'll, I'll add this on you know i couldn't do the shooter gimmick when i first went there in 1995 96 because taz was already doing that they had a shooter they were building taz up i was a shooter in japan but i was doing the, the real shoot style uwfi so when i came over to ecw in the very beginning they they put me as a little guido but i didn't really do too much you know i did wrestling but they didn't really pounce until taz left that's when they started like mentioning I was trained by Billy Robinson and stuff like that because you know they already had a shooter, so I didn't really get that name and it was Joey Styles after Taz left for for uh, you know WWE at the time WF whatever it was at the time, you know then I I was free to do more of the amateur stuff and then Joey Styles would start to say oh you know little Guido he was trained by Billy Robinson because I was trained by Billy Robinson in shoot style. So I was on TV in Japan a lot, but only people at that time, it was only VHS tapes. So it wasn't like now you could just stream things and people know you in the States. You know, it wasn't like that back then. So if we didn't tell the people that what I was doing, it wasn't like an internet and anything at that time. Now you could go back and watch all my stuff online. So, you know, it was easy to distance me from Taz. So when I came to ECW, like I said, Paul Lee put me in the, the comedy stable with Tracy, Tommy, and we would do all that. And then uh, once Taz left, then they started talking about uh, the ECW stuff. I mean, the UWFI stuff. And that was Joey Styles calling me the Sicilian shooter one day. He did it on TV or I was watching the show back the next day or that night, whenever it was on. And all of a sudden he used the Sicilian shooter. And, and ever since then, he we call that's how I got the name. Well, certainly memorable, and it, it's it's definitely stuck. And uh, Joey Styles, uh, what what a great uh, commentator, just a a pioneer in the industry. Speaking of of ECW, though, Guido, what what would you consider to be your? I, and I know this is difficult, but the in the original ECW, what would you consider to be, you know, your your highlight there from a, a career perspective? Well, it's got, it would have to be, you know, uh, you know, because I, I would say there's a lot of highlights on it because that's where I started on TV. That's, you know, I never been on TV. They gave my first opportunity. Uh, so, I mean, it would definitely have to be, you know, when me and Tracy won the ECW Tag Team titles in 1997, we beat, uh, we beat New Jack and Coronas, believe it or not, because something happened with Perry and he was hurt. Something happened with uh, New Jack's partner. And they ended up being the champions. And then we and me and Tracy ended up wrestling them. And now you want to talk about weapons and, and gore and stuff like that. I wrestled New Jack many a times in those garbage matches where he throws all the stuff in the garbage can full of weapons. I've been hitting from everything. I guarantee he has been hit with all the stuff that I've probably been hit with through my years. So as far as when it comes to that type of stuff, you know, I've been there too. You know, um, but that that is definitely one of the highlights. You know, I want I also want to make that was in 1997. And then I won him again in 2000 before ECW closed down. At that time, it was Tony Mamaluke. Um, so, I mean, I, I loved wrestling Rob Van Dam. I did it numerous times. Those were painful matches at times. You know, great to get through, just rough. Not painful, pain, you know, a, a, a rough painful, kind of in a good way. But that's just the way it is when, you, when you're going to work with a Rob Van Dam, you know. Um, but that was a lot of fun. So, you know. I would say winning the, the the championships. That's the most you can get in in where you go. So that's definitely a highlight. And, and now, if you want a WWE highlight, would be me wrestling. Like I wrestled at Madison Square Garden now, I don't know, 30, 40 times. But uh, the, you know, the the biggest one was for me was WrestleMania twenty because I was there WrestleMania one. So whoever knew twenty years later, you know, I'll be here. My parents were in the stands, and I was part of that that elimination match, whatever that was, an invitational, whatever that was. So, you know, that's a WWE highlight. Of course, winning the Cruiserweight title, too. But just wrestling in a garden where I, my father would take me every other month for, for years when I was 10, 11, 12, 13 years old because they only used to run on MSG every other month back then. This is like seven, 79, 80, 81. 
So, uh, so the month it wasn't on TV, he would take me to Madison Square so Garden to watch the matches. Now, in in terms of uh, some some of your your memorable opponents uh, across both the original ECW and uh, WWE, we're in Great North Wrestling going to be bringing in. We're proud to be bringing in the insane luchador super crazy in the the months to come do you have any uh memories of your your working with him oh i, I for me so i feel some of my my grace take it easy Leo. my dogs are barking but um uh, my my favorite my memorable for me and then watching them back was was our three-way dances which i i talked to the fans about numerous times through the years um you know it, it was very weird when i met um you know it, it was a little different for me because I came back from wrestling from Japan. So for me, it's a jury in the very beginning. Again, nobody really realizes that I already wrestled in Japan versus Japanese. So I was I was used to, even though it's shoot style, I also did work styles out there too. And that wasn't a fully shoot anyway. Um, so I already knew how it was to communicate with, with wrestlers that didn't speak English because I was used to that doing it in Japan for a couple of years, going over matches with these guys and, and knowing. So that kind of translated over into with super crazy too, because it was the same formula, the way you got to speak in and show. And, you know, if you go over something in the locker room, you know, you have wrestler talk. He understands wrestling. I can't go to a restaurant, hang out and have a football conversation, but we could have a, uh, put together a match in the back because of wrestling, you know, without using the word so much. So, and that's kind of a little, little bit of an art, but you pick it up as a wrestler and then you do it just because you have no choice. You know, it's, it's, I don't speak English at the time. Um, so, and they were very young in the business, and I was still young and hungry, and Tajiri, they were happy to be in America. This was a big deal, ECW at that time, and back in 97 when they were coming in. Um, so, we kind of grew together. So, we wanted the matches always to be good. We're always out there, you know, giving 110%, trying to outdo each other. And, you know, it made, it made a good formula, and I had some of my, I feel, I had some of my best matches with Tajiri in singles, with Crazy in singles, and then all together in the three-way dances. You were uh, part of the uh, WWE ECW uh, experiment slash brand, whatever whatever you want to call it, and that remains uh, uh, an aspect of the business that fans still debate to this day. Was it was it your uh, impression or your experience when you were there that uh, they they really weren't uh, they being senior management in the WWE they really weren't taking the brand seriously and and do you, uh, do you subscribe to the the theory that Vince brought ECW back after you know the huge success of the DVD and the one night stand simply to kill the uh, fan love for it? I, I don't know. You know, I don't know if he would do that. I mean, he he brought it back because he knew. You know, he thought he could make money off it too in the very beginning. You know, he, I I don't I don't think he did. You know, I mean, listen, I don't know. I mean, you know, why would he do that? You know, I mean, it wasn't like, and he was he was on ECW side for a long time when with WWE against WCW, you know, and him and Paul Heyman had a good relationship. So, you know, I I don't know. He did bring it back because I think the foreign fans forced him, but I think he maybe saw, hey, you know what? Maybe something I never really thought could make money. Maybe it could make money. You know, he worked with Paul Heyman in in the in the early days and was giving him money. You know, which we found out years later, he was trying to keep the company afloat then, paying all the bills and doing all that. Um, so, you know, I don't know if he brought it back, but I don't think he knew the reaction. I was in that one night stand. I wasn't brought back because I was already there. I was already under contract as Nunjo. I just went and worked the uh, that one night stand that was in the Hammerstein Ballroom. And, um, you know, and then that from that and the DVD and all that stuff, I think that's why they brought back the ECW and... I honestly think he wanted it to go good. You know, I would hope. Why would you bring it? Do why would you do that? He's a businessman. You know, um, you know. At the end of the day, do I know? You know, he could have done that. Who knows? He may have. So, do I buy into that theory that he brought the company back just strictly to shit on it? Nah, I don't think so. I don't think. I don't think that's the case. I think towards the end when it wasn't working and maybe he wasn't getting the ratings that he liked, you know, and then uh, right before we closed, you know, maybe. Maybe he just he got mad or something, or maybe then just ended it. But no, I don't think in his mind, like, I'm going to bring this back, and then we're going to squash it out. Because ECW was kind of on Vince's side from the 90s. So that's how, do you, how do you explain the uh, – here we are in 2023, and, and as I've experienced since 
Great North Wrestling made the announcement that that you were coming into July fifteenth at the Smith Falls Showdown. the The amount of of enthusiasm and love for yourself and the the ECW uh, product brand still remains uh, quite strong. How do you how do you explain the fact that that is that is still the case? And, and I don't see any uh, signs of those those hardcore fans uh abating in their their love for the product and the and the uh, legend such as yourself yeah i certainly i certainly didn't think that that four years that ecw was actually open you know well not not ecw open but i mean I, well first of all i was there when todd gordon first got it when it was eastern championship wrestling todd gordon brought, brought me and tommy cairo which i got that job from tommy cairo uh, to go to philadelphia and meet todd and we did an outside school free fair show and uh, it was called it was Eastern Championship Wrestling. We had we had that match. This is 1993 now. And then uh, and then Todd loved the match, and he's like, "Oh, I want you guys to start working my regular shows." At that time, he was running Chestnut Cabaret, the Marketplace, all those places in Philadelphia. And I went to work for him then. And it was Larry Winters was there, Johnny Hotbody, Tony Stetson. I don't know if you're familiar with any of these guys, uh, but that was Absolutely, the original yeah. Then I left there to go to Japan. In like 94, 95. And then that's when Shane Douglas, they did the thing with the belt and turned it into, you know, extreme championship wrestling. So when I came home from Japan, I was friends with Tommy Dreamer, Taz, because I already knew them from before. And those guys were the ones getting that that ball rolling with ECW, with Paul Lee. You know, so uh, when I came home, I actually reached out to Tommy Dreamer and he called me and told me to come to the arena. I mean, no, I went to Mint when we were doing the... Uh, Lost Battalion Hall in Manhattan. Uh, no, in, in Queens. Lost Battalion Hall. He's like, come down to me. We're doing TV. This is like 1995, the end of 95. And that was it. Then I met him. And then uh, after a few months, he brought me in as little Guido. So, uh, and that's all what I'm saying is, I guess I got off track. Uh, did I ever think in the year 2023, would, would ECW still be making noise or people actually still know what it is? And again, that's because of the internet, the DVD. The WWE, uh, you know, has a piece of it, and it's on their their library. So that has a lot to do with it. When you go on Peacock, you can go watch anything that we ever done. So people that didn't know, so, I mean, I feel it when I do independent shows. When I have a ten year old kid come up to me, and go, "Oh my God, little Guido, I love watching you wrestle." This kid is definitely watching video because he wasn't alive. He's only 12, 13. so he has to be watching something, and he knows me, my partners. You know, and that happens a lot. So, I mean, just the. The exposure alone, because of Peacock and WWE, and give you, you know, it's nothing's ever lost. So fans that never were friends, that's why I still get recognized on the outside today. Is because of of this, you're still out there. People that didn't never knew you, even though they weren't alive, it doesn't make a difference. You know, they have easy access to you, especially with the network and stuff like that. And I'm all over that between ECW and WWE. So, uh, so that I understand why it's still making noise. It's not like it's a, now. Did I think that it would happen when I was doing it? No, you know, I never thought that. But you know, I, if you're asking me, do can I believe it? I, I guess I can believe it because it's getting a lot of exposure and a lot people, you know, have a lot of access to viewing it. You know, and even not even online with WWE, you can you could just Google Nunzio vs Undertaker. That match comes up. No, you know, you don't even need the network. It's all over YouTube anyway. Yeah, a lot of fans uh, speak to the um, the emotional connection that uh, you know the the ECW storylines under uh, Paul Heyman were so poignant, and and you, you the performers really had a, a connection with the audience that I think endures to this day. At least that's my experience. Again, when fans found out that you were coming into Great North Wrestling, July the fifteenth. Yeah, I think ECW, I mean, some people may disagree because CZW was coming up in that that era too. But, you know, I think ECW, you know, made, you know, started a, like a, a trend. Obviously it did, you know, made a little mark with the hardcore stuff. So, you know, people are going to say no, but I'm going to say ECW was, was the first. And we did have a connection to the fans because Paul Heyman booked it like that in small atmospheres. That's why when, when ECW got brought back with WWE, you know, we were wrestling in large arenas. You can't connect like you would connect. And and that time passed. You know, that was that was a one and done. That's never going to happen again. You know, Paulie didn't plan on that happening. Things just fell into place from the whole beginning with Steve Austin frustrated with w, you know, CW getting fired or whatever. Him coming to WWF and then Paul just giving him a live mic 
letting get, getting his frustration out and letting Steve talk all over TV about the, you know that how pissed off he is. That, and obviously it worked out great for him because look look what it did for him. You know it really I think steered him in the right direction after that. You know um, yeah that's the way that's the way Paul book you know. Well, Nunzio, I do appreciate your time. The fans, again, are very much looking forward to your big appearance in one of our huge co-main events on Saturday, July the 15th in Smith Falls, Ontario, the Smith Falls Showdown, where you will be facing, once again, the almighty Bloodhunter fans. Go to ticketweb.ca and get your tickets. They're also available at the box office at the Smith Falls Memorial Center. Do you have any final thoughts, sir, on a message for the Great North Wrestling fans who will be able to meet you in a meet and greet before the show? And most importantly, your task, and that's facing the the most dangerous man in professional wrestling today, the Blood Hunter. Uh, well, I do appreciate the fans, and I am looking forward to it. It's nice to it's nice to be not forgotten. You know, and uh, seems like hopefully you have good ticket sales. There's gonna be a lot of people there. Again, I haven't been to Canada, and I've been I've been invited and and booked many times. I just never, uh, you know, just busy and not and just not taking them. You know, uh, so I do appreciate it, and um, I'm looking forward to it. And uh, we're gonna see, we're gonna see uh, how how this match ends up. You know, I mean, like I said before, you know, I've I've wrestled bigger and 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 you know crazier names in the past so uh you know this is just another task i haven't done this in a while versus a big guy like this but let's see how it goes i will be prepared well that that is uh definitely a match that uh again many are looking forward to including myself nuncio i want to thank you for your time this evening and uh, encourage the fans once again we've got an incredibly strong pre-sale on the show go get your tickets at ticketweb.ca or at the door and don't you dare miss this one